Hey, Virgo Seekers. Happy birthday, Mary Sowen. This will be a reading for September and October. And I'm working with the Light Series Tarot. Show me Virgo, please, for the next two months. The Tower. Okay. Whatever it is that you're planning right now is going to change. So if there's like a specific plan for the next few months or for the next couple of months, because this is for two months, um, things aren't going to go exactly as planned. However, and this is a very important thing for me to say, this does not mean bad. This could be a good surprise. This could be a great turn of events. I want to know more about this tower. Keep in mind, um, well, okay, interesting. Ten of Wands, Five of Cups, and Ten of Cups. An unexpected journey that will feel like a detour for you will lead you to your Ten of Cups. So this is a divinely guided detour. It's going to feel at first lonely and unknown. And then there you will find either a very big love story and or a community. Can be of course both often they go hand in hand um but this specific tower and the light series tarot feels very different it's almost like a rabbit hole that you can enter through which you discover like your magical powers or something like that so this may have a um A scary appearance or but it, it's the opposite as soon as you enter or as soon as you start or as soon as you go there as soon as things happen you realize oh my god it's actually it's like Dorothy um going through a hurricane a tornado and she finds herself in the kingdom of Oz right There is like something very fantastical to the, like a fantastical element to this reading. Oh, I just noticed this. Oh my God, look at this. So in this five of cups here, you see how she's holding a bowl? And there's like a ray of colors. And it's almost like she's manifesting this, this 10 of cups, which is also the rainbow and ray of colors. It's like it's from her bowl. She's creating this fantasy but this real life fantasy this manifestation of like her dreams it's like her sentiment is so authentic and so genuine and honest and humble in the face of creation it's just you see how there's this light pulled from her chest space into this swirl and I feel like it's it's and then when you see this swirl coming up here it's like she's creating it from this journey from this surprising unexpected journey that she has embarked on or is embarking on Or this could be someone else that suddenly leaves you, leaves your um, your life, and you're like, where do they go? Something like that. But I'm also seeing a full circle. I'm seeing a return, because this is like mountain terrain, right? And this is like ocean terrain. See the water. 
both are ten, so it's very different like climate. But it's circular. There's like again a detour, a divine detour. Show me more, please, for Virgo for the next two months. My Virgo Seekers, please. If you're wondering about my um, my jewelry, I made them. And this says here, Mary Sawin. He. And if you don't know, Sawin is the origin of Halloween. It's the Celtic slash pagan origin. It's the same meaning in essence, where the veil between the worlds is very thin and you can convey with other realms and with spirits. And it said that our lost, you know, beloved ones or ancestors come and pay us a visit. Um, and it's pretty much Halloween is just the same thing, different name that Christianity kind of took. And I mean, it, it's going deeper into like, it, it happened also with Christmas. It's not, it's not a solitary thing with Halloween where, um, they took pagan holidays and transformed them into Christian holidays to attract uh, more people to join Christianity. Um, and in fact, that's that's something interesting. In the first few centuries um, AC, it was actually considered um, sinful or bad to celebrate Christmas because Christmas is originally Yule which is also a pagan holiday. So back then they knew it. With time, with the centuries, you know, people forget generation after generation gets accustomed to celebrating a holiday and it becomes like something that is seemingly a part of one belief system, but it's actually a part of a completely different one. And it's fascinating how early days Christianity considered um, both Samhain and some, some, uh, some amongst would, would say that both Samhain and Christmas are like should not be celebrated because well they are pagan holidays and I, I I love them they're amazing I don't care what name you give them but you know they're fun um how did we get to that I don't know it doesn't matter anyway fun anecdote show me more please for Virgo about this story Hangman. And in this deck, I love that there are runes that she's kind of playing with. Okay. You're conjuring magic. You're conjuring a whole new dimensional reality. It's like wizardy in its finest. It's like you're orchestrating energies into matter that requires a level of mastery like if you know a lot of crafts or you know a lot of languages or you know you know actually yeah if you know a lot of languages also not also in reference to communicating with source or with energies or with the universe it's like it becomes a second nature um where thought becomes reality with more ease, but it requires after having go gone through like a very long time of, of a very long process of mastering that, you know, like masters make things look very easy, but then if you try it, you're like, what the? I can't do this. Um, how do we, how does it look so easy when you do it? Yeah. That's, that's wax on wax off, right? Mastery repetition. Um, so there's something that you've, mastered in this way of like in reference to ways of life like Virgo is like well you're mutable earth so that's so fitting right the ideal um expression of Virgo is when they manifest like that and and destroy like that you know like a sand castle uh where you build it and then you <laughs> collapses into the wind um that's very Virgo um type of mastery which it looks like in this reading that you've mastered now there are difficult cards here on the table 
right? There are cards with emotional distraught and sacrifice and even a sense of agony, but it's all very masterfully transmuted. It's like you, it, either you're so used to it or you're so um, mutable and adaptable that you just flow with it. And it's like, you know that you feel this way, but you're also like, healing through it you're just it's like you're swallowing it like a medicine you you see it for what it is for what it is that you can make it to be you know someone else would just collapse but you're like creating magic out of it but it's your life but it's also like it's almost like you're outside of it in a way you're like looking at your life from the outside, creating your life, experiencing and living through them, but also like observing it. It's very interesting. It's not, it's, it's here and it's not here at the same time, right? You're like, you're like, you're present and detached at the same time. And that is the Buddhist uh, form of detachment, not what new age spirituality made it out to be. Stop caring. <laughs> Don't answer them. <laughs> That's not the type of detachment that Buddhism speaks of. It's a detachment that is also attachment. It's interdependency as opposed to codependency. But people, instead of going from codependency to interdependency, they went from codependency to absolute detachment. And that's not what you're doing, hopefully. Uh, and if you are, then this is probably a message for you to not do that. It's like a learning experience. Um, yeah, so... It's very hard to achieve healthy detachment. Most healthy detachment are, are out there is, is just detachment. <laughs> but there's a level of healthy detachment here that you seem to have uh, either gained or in the process of gaining. Whoa. The Empress. Okay, yeah, you're creating something big for yourself. Doing very meaningful and very abundant. And very beautiful. You go from apprentice to master in the next two, two months. From an explorer to an empress. There's like this completion and birth of, of this of new existence for you. You're like you're bigger than yourself. Something with Pisces season, so maybe March around end of February slash March uh, 2024. It's going to be meaningful, but also spring. So March, April, May here with the Empress. Sorry. What are you conjuring? What is this? Some of you are going through like and an upgrade with your look, your style, your um, the way you present yourself, even the way you walk, your body language, your clothes. If if you're if you're feminine, the makeup. Like there's something. It's not exactly rags to riches because you don't have to be rich to be able to, to do that. It's a matter of style and 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 self care. It's like. Um, I think people who've known you like a few years ago, if they're going to see you in the next two months, they're not going to recognize you like a completely different person. Either you go from like a tomboy to uber feminine, um, you know, something along those lines or just wearing jeans and t-shirt or sweatpants all the time to like really 
really caring for your look and your style and your appearance. It's there's there's this I'm picking up on quiet attraction. So you might be very appealing to other people, but quietly. Because you're very focused. You're focused on whatever it is that you're doing. And focus is very attractive. Like when someone is just all in their craft or whatever it is they're doing, right? There's a question of home. Where is home that is coming through? Whoa. King of Cups and King of Swords. So by the way, if you're wondering about love, we'll see what comes through from these kings. I'm curious. But regardless, um, I made love readings, designated love readings for all the zodiac signs. So if you're watching this in September, you already have a love reading for September. And if you're watching this uh, end of September, October, then you also have a love reading for October. I will link them below. Um, it's looking to you and your person of interest. So cross watchers are also welcomed over there. Check them out. Okay, two kings. It's interesting because you know how we saw here the mountain versus the ocean, and the 10 and the 10. And now with the two kings, we also have mountain terrain here with the king of swords and ocean terrain here with the king of cups. So something with mountain versus ocean so maybe you're moving from one uh climate to the other in the next two months or maybe you're already doing so maybe you're already in the process um there's definitely travel and movement and it's air and water right both blue but very different elements They meet in ice. What is going on with these two kings? I feel like these two kings are dreaming this empress. Maybe there are two individuals represented by these different elements uh, or different terrain. You could be one of them or you could be the empress. It can also be the same person for some of you, just like someone who has this um, inner, maybe not divide as much as, could be integration hopefully, but like duality of water and air, of the ocean and the, and the mountains. Um, They're both forms of like meaningful spirituality and conveying with spirit. They just approach it from different directions. So King of Cups would be clairsentient, right? And King of Swords will be will be claircognizant. So one will speak to spirit from the heart and the other will speak to spirit from the mind, from the thought. And it could be a person, an individual that has both, that is both claircognizant and clairsentient. Um, or maybe you're you're interacting with with these two different individuals in ways of each of them brings out that th those aspects within you. So their job or their role in your life is to kind of trigger that for you and awaken it within you. I'm seeing a male figure that is very both sensitive, they're both sensitive and very uh, rational, which is a rare combination, a uh, welcomed combination, especially in men. Uh, there's like this um, both EQ and IQ, right? They listen to themselves, but also to their environment.
And tell us more about this, please, for Virgo. Okay. Strength, Six of Swords, and Seven of Pentacles. It's like this journey, Virgo, is like, it's it's called by this King of Swords, because you see this crow that he has up here on his sword? Um, and it's like, this character here in the Six of Swords is, is pulled by these crows, like, following their call. Um... Strength and Seven of Pentacles. I really am picking up that this strength and Empress kind of represent the same person. This could be you, right? That there's this level of like very quiet strength, like, um, Iron fist and a velvet glove kind of thing. But it's not, it's not malevolent. It's not like, you know, purposefully hiding its strength and pretending to be gentle. It's not that. It's, it's just, that's the most powerful form of strength, by the way, this quiet, um, Quiet water, waters run deep kind of thing. There's going to need to be a level of endurance here with the strength, six of swords and seven of pentacles. I'm seeing another journey. Maybe there's a return from the journey. Maybe within this two months, you, you both leave and return or, or go through two types of different travels or journeying. Um, And there's oh there's I, I keep picking up like a level of, of a calling, like either someone is calling on you to do so or you feel called somehow, but again, this level of endurance that will be required is something that is comes very easy for you. It's not new to you, it's not something you're not accustomed to, it's something that you can really easily do. Um I see six six weeks to six months, this entire thing, like it will vary. <sighs> this King of Cups here, I feel like he's manifesting something. He's like calling on you to return or something. So maybe there's someone from where you're coming from and then there's someone from uh, where you're traveling through or to. And they're like pulling you, both have very strong energy and they're both like pulling you in different directions. Show me more please. Do you like my setup? I made this, it's a box and I put like a crystal, a selenite with all the zodiac sign, the zodiac wheel, with like, I glued it with Velcro, this is glass, so it's like, um, mosaic, and I painted, actually, I'm going to show it to you, so, yeah, so this is the box, right, you open it, it's like silver and white inside, and the back is dark purple, Looks like a book. I wanted it to look like a book. And here it says in runic uh, alphabet, the Rota of Tarot, 
what the Torah of a tour, which means it, which means um, the wheel of life speaks the laws of love. Uh, I think it's really cool. Okay. Of course, I think it's cool. I made it. <laughs> so objective. <laughs> Okay, can you explain? I don't understand what's going on. There's a lot, a lot going on in this reading. The fool. Someone is have a very. Someone has a very strong pull on you. They. They think about you and you feel it. It means that there's a strong connection there between the two of you. If, if it's like two manifestors, two people who really know how to work with energy and create a reality, um, you gotta, you guys need to have a conversation and align your manifestation because if you pull in one direction and they pull in another direction, you're manifesting two realities simultaneously that might be contradictory and creates a mess and a clash. Just just um, get your stories straight, <laughs> right, with the universe. Just get your stories straight. What happened? That's it. The next two months are going to serve as a crazy restart for your life. It's Some of you are going to be like, your life has been one way before and then completely different after, a before and after. Very meaningful time for you guys, Virgo. Well, it is your birthday season. Venus is finally direct. Um, Mercury is going to move direct mid-month of September, your ruler. Things are going to start feeling better, clearer in general. But for you guys, those of you who are drawn to this reading, I feel like it's going to be so interesting. But from a place of power, I don't see you as a victim. You're not a leaf blown in the wind. There's... You hear a calling, but you you still exist within it. You don't just give away your entire existence. Sorry. Okay. Two of swords in the reverse. There's this... came right underneath the king of swords so there's libra energy so this could be we're probably in october now with this reading um and these crows again there's something you don't want to hear virgo there's something you don't want to come to terms with even though it's already happening already playing out You're like no i'm strong enough to change it okay but are you sure you want to change the change you know if something is happening in such an intense level take a humble moment of sitting down with yourselves deep breaths and like why do I really want to change the change? Why do I really want to prevent this process? Is it because I genuinely think it's wrong for me or a level of ego? Well, I've already started this. I want to finish it up properly. Like, you know what I mean? It's Show us more, please. A little more. King of Wands. We have another king now. <laughs> Three kings. One more king and it will be like the emperor. So king of cups, king of swords, king of wands. We're missing the king of pentacles. 
And the lion is coming through here, both with the strength card and the painting and the king of wands. With something very similar between this king of wands and the king of swords. So if it's another person, two of them are kind of, they remind you of each other. And the King of Wands is the only one who's like looking straight at me. The King of Cups has his eyes closed. The King of Swords is looking in the other, other direction. And the King of Wands is like looking straight at you kind of thing. Right? Page of Swords. Okay, enough cards. The only pentacles I have on the table are the seven of pentacles. Now, the empress is also very earthly because she's Taurus, she's nature, she's the earth. Um, but in the empress, it's like it's an archetype, it's an essence that already exists. It's a walking earth, it's like a woman, right? And then the seven of pentacles is something that is being built, built in a practical manner, but it's taking a long time. It's very slow. So this reading is very um, mental and emotional and fiery, but it's all all these all of these elements and sentiments are like pulling in different directions, and there's a lot of like powerful wisdom here and advanced spirituality and passion and thought and creativity and study and courage, so much courage. Um, but it's it's also like spread in so many different directions, messy kind of thing. And maybe that's what the next few months ought to be about, you know, maybe just in January, which is Capricorn season, things will start really solidifying. 2023 was weird. <laughs> it's a weird ass year. Um because it's the aftershock of the previous years where we're like, okay, so where are we? Who are we? What are we? It's like everything and everyone was uprooted and restationed. And it's like just getting acclimized into like whatever new thing you found yourself in, right? It's like this in-between year. It's the year of a bridge. Um, in the meantime, you know, you study, you explore, you surrender, you feel, you think, you connect, you disconnect. It's, but all of this, you're not, you're not a victim in this and you're not weak in this. You're very much in yourself. You're very much like knowing yourself. Everything around you might feel chaotic and different and weird and strange and new, but you yourself feel more familiar than ever to yourself, not to others maybe, but to yourself. It's like, it's not that you've changed as much as you've refound yourself. Does that make sense? Like you've been all kinds of things from a place of exploration. And now all that expo exploration of different aspects of yourself led you to you. And even though in your day-to-day -day it might seem new or different, it feels so familiar because that's the blueprints you came here to play out. You know, that's that's who you truly are. So I, I think from here on, life will be a lot easier because the people that you will draw in, the experiences, the job opportunities, et cetera, will be a lot more in, a, in alignment with you, right? And things will flow easier. Because in the past, even though you thought you knew who you were, things didn't flow. Everything was harsh and rigid and difficult and challenging. Uh, it's because it, you weren't actually you, right? So the things that you, uh, you've echoed something that was different than who you truly are, that attracted things that seemingly were a good fit to you, but weren't. 
which is why there was so many difficulties because spirit was trying to tell you, no, 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 that's not actually it. You know, but now that you are it, things will start being it. And you'll, you'll, you'll tell by things that are just, it's, it's just, it's so easy to talk to this person, right? It's just, there's no drama at that place, right? It's so quiet in that apartment and just feels right. It's like there's no issues. And you get to just be messy and, and, and do all kinds of things. It's, it's peaceful. So even though there's so much chaos on the table, it also feels very peaceful. And, you know, all rivers lead to the sea. All of these different energies and swirls will just lead to one solidified um, life experience and a sense of self, just not quite yet. Not quite yet, not in this reading. Can you clarify King of Swords and King of Cups for me, please? And King of Wands. Clarify the three kings for Virgo. Clarify the three kings. Four of Swords. I feel like these three individuals might represent different aspects of what you consider to be home or your background or your history or where you come from. This, there's also like a sense of coming home, like maybe you're visiting a familiar place with familiar faces. And it just makes you feel so at peace. And some of you, I feel like you're really protecting and guarding your heart because you've been so hurt in the past from love. So even though you have these different individuals surrounding you really be interested in you, um, it's like you're kind of not even seeing them. You're closed off to them. But I think in the next two months, you'll start really seeing them. Um, Do you want to look at the cards? I want to also look at the um, major arcanas. So we have the tower, the hangman, the empress, and strength. And then we have two tens, ten of wands, and ten of cups. And we have three kings. King of cups, king of swords, and king of wands. Oh, we also have the fool. Thank you for those of you who have been trying to tell me through the screen. <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> there we go. And then there is two, four, five, six, seven, and page of sorts. Okay. So yeah, some of you are reaching a major completion when it comes to if if let's say you're an explorer or a wanderer or someone who travels a lot or moves around a lot, uh, I feel you're it's like this is an end of the cycle and you're reaching like this place that feels like home or where you'll feel like you want to settle down. Um, this could be a familiar place, this could be a new place that feels familiar. These three kings, I I I feel them as allies. This could be, you know. People from your past, this could be your first boyfriend or so, and then the one that got away and the one that is now going to be your person. You know, there's like something very, like th those meaningful um, steps in your romantic life throughout your life um, that are coming through in the next couple of months. I don't know if it's like to integrate the lessons and what you've gained from these connections or if it's one person that feels like all of them 
uh, you know, like you had one person that re you really liked that about them and you had another person that you really liked that about them. And then you find someone that like contains all of these characteristics that you've been searching for. And that's really, that's really cool. Um, three and one kind of thing. I mean, for some of you, it's more than, it's just more than one love potential or love situation. You know, maybe you're, you're just dating in the next two months, you know, maybe you're, on a dating app and you're going out a lot and it's like multiple people that's also possible but i don't i don't know i don't i don't think so so much um i do pick up on mental exhaustion you do need to rest virgo you need to focus on eating well sleeping well um maybe hold off on learning something new and just kind of go over the things that you've already learned, already know, and just kind of give your mind a mental break because you're the constant student and the constant master, right? You, you're the seeker and the master and the seeker and the master and the seeker and the master. Like you, you keep learning for the sake of expansion. So you, you master so many things, but your system, I feel like needs a little bit of a break, a restart. And you got to start creating from the spirit and from the heart space and not from the mind, which is why you need to give your mind a little bit of a break. Okay, you are very, very tired. Maybe you've dealt with like situations in the recent past that required a lot of mental stamina and perseverance and patience and strength of character and a lot of like, you know, mediating between the different aspects of yourself. Because again, what I said, iron fist and a velvet glove you're very strong but you're also very sensitive so um it can be confusing to the system as well trying to kind of mediate and calibrate and integrate the two polarities so give yourself give yourself a break if not breaks <laughs> there is a surprise element in this reading I, I see you finding yourself in a completely different place than you than you're planning right now. <laughs> okay. If you want to study tarot for me, check out Tarot Masterclass. If you want to check out your love readings for September and or October, also check out the links below. Uh, stay magic. Stay true. I love you very much. Bye for now.